Hey everybody, stick around if you want to learn how I purchased this off-market home in a highly desirable area, renovated it using private money, and I will flip this home and make over 30K. Stick around. Hey everybody, Kurt Davis here with Real Estate Wealth Coaching and I want to thank you for stopping on this video today. Uh, before we really get started though, if you've been watching any of our videos, make sure that you click the subscribe button. If you watch this video to the end, which you should, make sure you click the like button and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. We love talking to our viewers. So with that being said, I'm going to talk today about this property behind me. Now this is a home that I found that was an off-market home in a more retail quality area. Now, before we actually get into property details and talking numbers and things like that, uh, what I want to explain is this video is maybe for the viewer who, who has been semi-successful in wholesaling, you've completed some fix and flips maybe on a slightly lower level and you're now ready to take the plunge and you're ready to look at maybe more expensive properties. So uh, with that being said, this home behind me is in an area, a, a suburb of Memphis called Germantown and it's a highly desirable retail type market. Uh, homes are selling very, very fast on the retail market in this area. Uh, I found this property because it was brought to me by a realtor actually. It was an off-market listing and the realtor I am actually friends with, she and her husband, and they live right in this neighborhood as well. So I guess you could say I had an in on this particular property which, hey, sometimes having an in is all you need. And the situation with this particular home was it was owned by an older woman who was moving into a retirement uh, center and her son was left to take care of all of the belongings, the possessions, they were in charge of the estate. And this individual just simply did not have the time to handle this. So uh, he reached out to his neighbor across the street, essentially, and this is where I was brought into the picture because this was not a house that was uh, <clears throat> move-in ready. This house had a lot of outdates. It needed a lot of updates, repairs, upgrades, things of that nature. Uh, it was just crazy. And what was also interesting about this property is, is that as of right now, we're still in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, I purchased this home roughly a little over a month ago. So back then, uh, everything was just new, fresh. Everyone's quarantined, everyone's staying in. So there was a little of uncertainty when I was looking at this property, but as an experienced real estate investor, I just had decided to, I had to keep moving forward. If a deal's a deal, I don't care what's going on. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go inside the property because what I wanna do is I wanna explain to you what renovations and upgrades that we did to this property. Uh, before we go in though, I'm gonna explain you to the numbers here. This house I was able to purchase for $237,000. Now, my private lender was only willing to lend 225000 of that, so in theory, I'm short. This is not the typical transaction where I was able to get a private loan that covered 100% of my purchase and renovations, so one of a few things were going to happen. Either I was going to have to pass on the deal, uh, or I'd have to find a, another private lender who would do a second position, uh, but you do not find a lot of private lenders who will do a second position lien. So ultimately what happened is my private lender made the $225,000 loan and I paid for the rest of this transaction out of my pocket. I, I paid for the rest of the closing and 100% of the renovations out of my pocket. So uh, I'm all in uh, with my purchase and renovations for I wanna say right around 290, 295,000. We have this home listed for 350,000. So I'm projecting that uh, if I do get my target uh, sale price by the time I factor out sales commissions and some uh, assisted closing cost and holding cost I should net over thirty thousand dollars on this property but we're gonna go inside because I'm gonna show you what I did to this home in terms of renovations because renovations on a retail property are there's a lot better quality everything costs more on retail and we're gonna go in and check it out right now let's go All right. All right, guys. So 
This house is a four bedroom, two and a half bathroom, two story property that's 2,500 square feet, has a two car attached garage. So here in the main area, when I purchased this home, it already had, uh, essentially it had hardwood floors in it, but it was parquet hardwood floors. It's a more older, outdated style flooring. And I actually was going to leave that in the house. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be budget conscious, but I'm also trying to think, you know, hey, a lot of older houses in this area will have this type of flooring. It's not a big deal. But uh, actually getting a second opinion from my wife and my flooring guy, their professional suggestion was we needed to upgrade the flooring. So in this whole living room area here, in the front entry area down the little hallway and into the dining room, uh, we decided to install brand new hardwood flooring. This was an additional cost that I really was not budgeting for, but it was about $4,200. So, you know, here we are up $4,200 on the initial renovation. Uh, we, we repainted the whole interior of this property. We did light fixtures. Um, I mean, we just did so many things to this property. Uh, this house just does have one main living area. It does have two staircases in the front, but we're actually, I'm going to show you the staircase here because in a lot of older houses, they'll have carpet on the stairs. Uh, but I wanted to make this house pop a little more. So we had all new wood installed on the stairs, all nice stained to try to match as closely as we could to the new hardwood floors that we put down. So. Um, we also did this on the back stairwell too. The cost to do this, it was about $75 per stair and there's 26 stairs. So what is that, close to $2,000 and just doing an upgrade here, but I feel it's well worth it and just really makes the house pop for when you walk in. Um, down here we have the half bathroom in this house. Nothing super exciting, but we decided to put granite. You know, we put granite everywhere. Some people will just do granite maybe in the kitchen, but we put granite everywhere. We did a new mirror, light, toilet, fixtures, everything. So all the bathrooms are fully updated. We're gonna go right here in the kitchen. Uh, now, before we actually talk about the kitchen, this house does have a really nice attached screened in patio. It's really good sized. There is access to it from the living room, so uh, you know this is just one of the one of the nice features this particular property offers. Now, in the kitchen here, in the kitchen, we have all new slate flooring, all new granite kitchen countertops. We painted the cabinets, hardware, poles, everything. Uh, new stove, new dishwasher, undermount sink. The only thing that is actually not brand new in here is the refrigerator, but that's working just fine. So kitchens and bathrooms are always two of the major factors that sell homes, especially when you're doing retail, everything has to be nice. Uh, these granite countertops here were right around 2,200 bucks. I spent about $1,300 on these appliances. Uh, you know, painting the kitchen cabinets were a couple hundred bucks, uh, but this has to look good, it has to look fresh, and it has to look trendy, So, but it also has to be neutral at the same time. Uh, right in here we've got, we're in the dining room here, good sized dining room, like I said, we, do, we did new fixtures everywhere, so a new uh, modern chandelier uh, in this particular property. Now this house, all the bedrooms are on the second level. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention to you is that in a lot of houses that were built in the 70s and 80s, they did popcorn ceiling, you know, the, the, the bumpy ceilings. Uh, I made a decision that we were going to scrape and do smooth ceilings in this whole house, everywhere, even the garage, we did smooth ceilings. For them to take off all that popcorn and do smooth ceilings was about 3,300 bucks. To paint the inside of this house because of the size was about 4,700. Uh, all these new light fixtures and and a lot of a lot of the detail things, you know, outlet covers and switches and things like that. That was about another fifteen hundred bucks uh, as well. So we're going to go upstairs. And I'm going to show you some of the bedrooms and what we did to the bathrooms as well. Again, here's the second staircase that leads up to the back bonus room to the upper level. Nice stairs as well.
One of the other nice features about this house is this back staircase does lead up to a bonus room. This could be a great area for a family with children. You know, a lot of, I see a lot of people, they'll turn this into the kids playroom or like a back TV room, bonus room, whatever you want to call it. But great feature. We put all new carpet and padding throughout this house. Uh, all new carpet because now we did a nicer grade carpet than we would for say our rental property. So this was about $2,600 for all new carpet and padding. Um, this door here goes right into the master bedroom. Now what's, what's nice about this is there are, let's see, we've got two large closets. They're closets, we don't need to go into them. They're not that exciting. All right, but what is exciting is this master bathroom. So this is the master bathroom ensuite here and we ordered a brand new custom vanity that has marble top. Uh, before this, the old vanity that used to be here only had one sink and then it had a long counter, but you know, obviously most people like to have the dual sinks. So we ordered this custom vanity. They roughed in the plumbing so that we could put this in. We did all new tile flooring everywhere. Um, now this house, uh, in this particular bathroom here, it used to have a, a typical standard bathtub. Now come this way, I'll show you. And I'm not gonna turn the light on here because if I turn the light on, the fan comes on and it gets loud. We took out the old tub in this house and we did this custom stand-up shower with all new custom tile and hardware and everything like that. We put in a really good sized shower box here. Um, now the reason that we decided to do this because the, the hallway bathroom that we're gonna see here in a second does have a tub still. So if for some reason there was not a tub up here, we probably would not have done this. But uh, this is just a great, great feature. It looks modern, it's fresh. Uh, to do this tile work here that you see in the shower and all on the floors here was about 2,500 bucks. The custom vanity that we saw with the count with the marble countertop, uh, that was 2,800 bucks. I had to order that off a of Home Depot special order. So, and, and again, you know, we've got the new toilets and the poles and the hardware. We did all new hinges and door handles throughout the whole house. That was an extra... Gosh, I don't know, thousand bucks, something like that. It's, it's, it's a lot of these details that just keep adding up. And like I say, that's, that's the kind of thing that will separate a lot of investors who may or may not be ready to go to the next level because uh, when you're doing retail, there's always going to be additional expenses. Uh, and especially when it's something that you do not do a lot of the time, you just have to expect that there's gonna be some additional cost overruns. But here, you know, again, here, this is obviously we're at the top of the stairs here where we came in. Here is the, let's see, the, yeah, I turned the light on in here. We've got the fan that comes on, so, but we did all new granite countertops in here as well. New mirror, lights, toilet, new hardware, everything like that. So this is the hall bathroom. Nothing super exciting. It's a bathroom. And... You know, we've got the three bedrooms over here. So we've got the master and the additional three bedrooms up that give it the four bedrooms. So uh, let's go downstairs real quick because I want to show you guys uh, out in the patio. All right, everybody. So we're, we're kind of nearing the end of the property tour on this one. We're out here on the screen and patio. This is another huge feature uh, to this house. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's good size. We've got the, the stained concrete here. It's all screened in. We've got the ceiling fan with light. We've got access right into the living room. So if it's raining outside, you can come out here, hang out, listen to it rain, go back inside. Large backyard, good size backyard. Tons, tons of room for kids, swing sets. Heck, you could even install a pool if you wanted to. Um, so, you know, as I've been going through this property, you know, I've been trying to make you aware of what some of these costs were in this property. Again, I think I'm right around $50,000 on this renovation. And the point that I kind of want to get across is that, you know, for this renovation and the additional cost of closing all had to come out of my pocket. My private lender was not covering it. So, you know, this, this video is really not for the wholesaler who is just getting started in real estate. You know, this, this is really more for the wholesaler who's been 
starting to transition and been doing some fix and flips, building up their cash reserves, and they're now ready to potentially take on a level like this because the reality is is that though everyone keeps promoting no money down, zero down, that kind of thing, and that's great, and I do that a lot of times, I had to make a decision on this property to use my own cash to close on this deal to make this deal happen. And the reward for doing that when I sell this home is that I'm looking at making over $30,000 plus on this property and that's the key. So uh, this would not have been able to be possible if I did not have my own money to make it happen because no other private lender would make a second position loan on this property. So. With that being said, if you guys liked this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of the renovations, let me know what you thought of my numbers, let me know what you think. So with that, we will see you guys in the next video.